I am Prasant Kaleta. I'm a professor in Agricultural and Biological Engineering Department here at the University of Illinois. I have been here for the last 15 years. My uh, professional background is mostly on water and sustainability. Uh, I started working on recently on post-harvest losses and, and, and prevention. So, you know, I, I am the new director of the institute. We call it ADM Institute for the Prevention of Post-Harvest Loss. Uh, we want to start with some introduction of the post-harvest losses. What is it? You know, why do we have to worry about it? Or what are we going to do about it? How is that related to our lives? How is that related to our society? So as you know, by 2050, the way the world population is, is increasing, we will not have enough food to feed everybody. So, and you know, the global food production, in order to feed those people, we have to increase our production by 70% uh, or so to feed the people. How do we arrange that? How do we manage to feed the people? And you know, we, many of us, we, know we are here at the University of Illinois, we are the land-grant university. We are pioneers in, in agricultural production. We have, we have helped solving many problems in many parts of the world. So you know, we come back to the agriculture. You know, that is the key to alleviate the global food problem out there. So the answer is we need to increase the production to feed these people. Can we do that? Are we limited by anything? Yes, we are. The land that we have it is very limited. And you know, for example, you know, the arable land, that means the land we use to produce crops are very limited. We all know how limited water and energy is. You know, in, the, in our total usable water that we have, 70% of the usable water is put into agriculture. And then rest is into your domestic and industrial purpose. The land, you can think of, we have by 2030 food demands will require another 200 million more hectares of land, which is about the size of Canada and US. We don't have that much land. So think about it now, that although in the one hand to feed the people we need more food, on the other hand, our resources are limited. So that, what does that tell us? We probably are limited to increase food production. By 2050, we have 9 billion people. How do we feed them? So that's the big question. That is the main thing for this, this course that we are going to tell, you know, we, are, we're, we want to talk to you about, you know, what are our alternatives? And, and that's why this course, that post-harvest loss prevention, comes into picture. So what is post-harvest loss? And, and why should we be worried about it? Right now, the, the current estimate is about one third of all food that we produce is lost or wasted. In 2011, you know, the United Nations FAO, they, they published a report of their study called Global Food Loss and Food, food Waste, and that's where they put all this data that they found from that study. That sparked the interest of the whole global community. So. What's the difference between post-harvest loss and waste? The post-harvest loss is, it happens from the, the, at the production level from harvesting of the crop all the way to the retail. And then the waste is when the losses happen at the consumer level. I mean, they waste a lot of food. For example, you know, you eat, you have lots of food on your plate and then you don't eat, you don't need to eat all that and then you waste. So that's a small example out there. So here you will see that the food loss versus food waste happens at many different levels in different countries. In developed countries like Europe or North America, or mostly you know, in industrialized Asian countries, we have a significantly higher uh, food loss at consumer level. Look at the other in Africa, in Latin America, and, and, and other areas we have a lot more post-harvest loss that happen from production to retailing out there. The reason that we have more losses in the development, they don't have the infrastructure. From let's say harvesting, these people do it manually with sickle. And you know, they may not be able to harvest the crop at the right time. Maybe there is rain, they don't have the equipment, they don't have the labor, maybe the, the, the owner is sick, 
during the time of the harvest, there could be various, there, no structure right at the harvesting. Then they don't have the, the mechanism to dry that crop. So if you don't dry it and store it, you can grow molds on it. So you lose a significant person. Then they don't have the storage facilities. So you will, wherever you store it, whether in a bag or in a, in a simple storage building out there, so you might lose a lot, a significant percent of your crop that you put in the, in the capacity uh, will be lost. And then, you know, the, they don't have the good infrastructure in milling and in the market, you know, the, the smallholder farmers, many of them don't have the market facility. And in addition to that, they do not have the good policies for, you know, sale, food sale pricing, and all those kind of things out there. So let's talk about how these losses happen in different parts of the world are the same. Let's say if we have rice or wheat or corn, maize, whatever, are these losses same from uh, location to location or in the same location are all these different grains have the similar kind of losses. So we'll, let's talk about just South and Southeast Asia. So these are many different processes of the post-harvest loss, say, you know, handling storage, processing, packaging, distribution, and consumption, and all out there. Look at this, you know, the losses are different for different crops. Processing and packaging contributes significant losses in fruits and vegetables than in cereal out there. So look at next one. In this chart here, we are looking at you know, the post-harvest losses at various different processes, starting from harvesting, threshing, drying, storage and milling in China versus rest of Asia. So we can see even in China, we have significant need for storage, significant need for milling, those production losses out there. The milling technology, probably for rice milling technology in China is better than rest of Asia. So you see that uh, lower than rest of Asia. Others are all, you know, uh, higher because their production is also very high. So you compare that, you know, in the same proportion, their losses are also very high. Now, let's look at even in one country. Let's look at the, the estimated post-harvest loss of black gram. You know, this is kind of a lentil uh, in India. Even within developing countries, some part of that country may be a little bit more mechanized. They might have mechanized agriculture. Some of their states or regions may not have that thing. And here is a good example, Maharashtra. You know, this is a state where Mumbai is located. You know, it's a very advanced city compared to many of the other Indian cities. Madhya Pradesh is in the central state in India. This is relatively uh, low economy and you know, do not have many of the uh, industries and all out there. So you can look at that in the harvesting, for example, you have a lot more losses here, more than 10% uh, losses in harvesting because the, for the simple reason, they do not have mechanized harvesting. They don't have the machines. M many of these things probably is done by the, the farmers and all out there. And in the same way, if you look at even the drying, comparing these two uh, uh, different regions, you know, look at the drying losses are much higher there. So there could be many different factors that are going into that. It's not very simple. It's very complicated systems when you look at the post-harvest loss. So oh, the reason I wanted to show you just only to make one thing clear, you know, even if you look at one crop, one fruit, in one country, in two different locations, you cannot generalize. So it's a very complicated system. So we said at the beginning, we don't have enough food to feed everybody if our population grows at the current rate and if we do not increase our production. Our second message was, we need to reduce the losses from what we already produce because we do not have enough resources to grow more food. Land is limited, water is limited, energy is limited. So that's our second message. And the third is the investment that is needed to reduce the loss is a lot smaller than the investment. Otherwise, we will need to produce more food. I haven't talked much about the business. I haven't talked much about the market. I haven't gone into details of what are, you know, 
the, let's say, many different drying technology or storage facilities in Africa or India or in the U.S. In many parts of the world, even if the technology is there, people do not use it. There are drying technology for developing countries, but still they lose a significant amount of crop for, from lack of drying because simply they do not know. Education is the prime limitation. People, information is not given to farmers, given to people out there. This class is not meant for college students or for farmers or for policymakers or for practitioners. This class is for everybody to know the issues of post service losses and what we can do. If everybody can chip in a little bit, you know, whether through information, through education, through changing a design, or adopting a simple low cost technology, if everybody can contribute a little bit, we are going to solve a big problem. You know, let's say we lose 30% of the crop today. If everybody, if, if, if every, all the farmers, students, policymakers, everybody synergistically put some effort, even if we can reduce 5%, we feed many, many million people in the world. So the purpose is, you know, the purpose of this course is to bring that sensation with, among people. That means we need to do something. We just can't let this food get lost or you know be wasted out there let's do everybody do something and save some of the food we may not be able to save all the 30 percent of the loss in one day or one year or 100 year but if we can save it you know maybe in proportion of the population growth we will be contributing contributing to our humanity